Hey guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler, and morning Christine. Morning. We're, um, this is part two of our, our deal from the shipping containers, and we're just starting to process it all. If you haven't seen one of these videos before, we'll take you through uh, some of the good stuff we've found. We've already got some nice glassware out of one of these boxes. That one's carnival glass, I think it's Australian. There's some nice Carltonware too. Bit of Carltonware, yep. There's some nice tins. And uh, this tin we just got out and it was coated in a uh, like a contact sticky paper. We didn't think much of it when we pulled it out of the container, but underneath, oh, that's restuck. Underneath we have a nice vintage tin, probably about the 1960s, really good condition. So that's an excellent example. So this contact was done its job of preserving the paintwork, not particularly rare. But I would think we'd get about $30 for that tin. Uh, there's a nice Griffiths tea tin here, which um, they're always sought after. Anything kitchen related seems to sell very well. So anyway, we'll get to processing. I was saying if you haven't seen these videos before, we uh, I'll link part one underneath. And we'll take you through how we record stuff and we'll give you some values. And in part three, we'll give you a bit of a wash up. Okay, we'll see you soon. We only got through a couple of boxes this morning, but we'll persist in doing a few each morning and then we've got to get the bigger stuff out of the van. But I'll do constant updates to show you some of the stuff we found. This um, dog, it's probably not in 60s. It looks brass, but it's actually just a die cast. It's been plated. It's marked Japan underneath. But it's quite a nice dog and that will sell well in the shop. We've got $30 on that. There's a piece of 50s Diana pottery. Could be 60s. There's an old iron trivet, a brass trivet, and I expect this will be a very old one. Uh, the people weren't the sort that were going to buy reproduction stuff. It's probably been in the family a long time. But because you can buy reproduction ones, they don't bring a lot of money. Uh, we've put 20 on that. It should sell easily at 20 though. Uh, we looked at the carnival glass. We've looked at the tins. Uh, kitchen stuff as far as old boiling pots, they sell quite well. We put 20 on that one. It's a little bit dinted up. Oh, 15 on that one. We must have put 20 on the bigger one. And this is a more of a 70s retro enameled uh, casserole pot. Really good condition. We put 25 on that and I would expect that would sell pretty quickly. Uh, the old bone handle knives are always popular. These sell very well, uh, particularly the square handed ones. Um, We've put $5 each on those. Uh, a lot of people just remember them from their childhood and they're very good steel. Uh, you can't wash them in hot water though. You can't put them in the dishwasher because the handles will eventually deteriorate. Uh, they're probably not all worth $5, but we'll leave that to our customer's discretion. What usually happens if we put $5 each is all the good ones go at $5 and then whatever sits there for a week or two, we know probably we should drop it down to about three dollars so customers will decide which are the best ones but there's good value in there um so that's really all we got through today there was oh what was down here there was a this is a walking stick or it's actually known as a shooting stick uh it's a walking stick that can be turned into a seat now i don't really know where the term shooting stick came from i think it's an english term so you can stick the spike in the ground and give yourself a bit of a rest if you're out shooting foxes perhaps or out with the hounds. I'm not sure. If you know a bit more about why they're called shooting sticks, let me know. But they sell pretty well. I think we put 60 on that one. Yep, $60. There's an old suitcase down here. It's a bit rough and the latches are actually broken. We just put 10 on that. But they're good decorator pieces. They sell quite well. So I'll give you an update as we go through and uh, you'll see all the good bits and pieces we found. Another morning processing and we've nearly filled the table again. There was a lot of little stuff in this uh, box. We, we've got a lot of little cutlery sets and a lot of these were wedding gifts in the 50s and maybe 40s. Uh, that one's, they're all silver plate so there's nothing particularly valuable. In fact these are rather hard to sell. Little cake forks there. So we've only put $8 on that set. Uh, this is a stainless steel set uh, from the 70s. They're like splades, I think they're called buffet forks. And that's a nice set. We've got 10 on that. But a lot of these, just uh, silver plate, 
sometimes you've got to check the hallmarks and sometimes you can get sterling silver it makes a huge difference to the price but we keep these fairly cheap because otherwise they just clutter up our shop uh, but there's a lot of them as you can see and we find cleaning out deceased estates a lot of these sort of things were not only wedding gifts but they're also um, prizes for golf and bowls and all the other things and a lot of them end up in cupboards and never have been used and this is a great example these knives i mentioned the bone handle knives earlier these ones are absolutely brand spanking new never been used look at the, the reflection on that still got the little covers the original box now they're better than five dollars each we priced that set at 50 and uh, that should sell pretty quickly so that's a great little great little find that one there was a bit of carlton ware china which used to be very very collectible and hold good dollars now it sells but nowhere near as much as it used to in the 80s some of them have some little chips so there's 10 on that one eight on that one and the larger one was actually in very good condition and we put 35 on that one i would suggest that that would have made twice that about 20 years ago so but that's all right it looks good in our shops and we like to have a selection of china uh there's a few other things here nothing outstanding this was a really nice game in fact the best thing about it was the box it's probably 1950s maybe maybe early 60s beautiful graphics really it's only i can't get the lid off really it's only just some dice and a shaker there's no instructions but um i like that it says for all ages from 6 to 60 well yeah these days 60 isn't that old it's only about five years off for me uh so perhaps 60 was much older back then than what it is now i'd like to think so anyway it's a gonna sell well because of the box uh there's also a few things we've got to check here that's a flash from the camera great to have the original box as well lots of little thimbles they're all just souvenir ones not much value there there were some english ones down here that we put five dollars each on a lot of you might remember these money tins money boxes uh the banks had them this one's a baby's box uh, i think it would have been yeah it's from a bank which bank the state savings bank of victoria and that's great the artwork's really good on that one we've put 15 on that uh, there's a depression glass butter dish here that are very popular but it's badly chipped so we put 10 so yeah it's just this is all just out of one box there's a nice 60s era art glass vase here we put 30 on that one even though it's a small one it, it really has beautiful colors in it and the retro people like that bit of random stuff as an old stapler um ignore the yamaha amplifier there that's a project i've got to do some green glass glasses there's only the two so that's all we got through today we'll get back to this next chance we get so nothing particularly good this morning but how cute are these little plaster dogs uh, i'm not sure what age they'd be they may be not in 40s because plaster or chalkware it was known uh, was quite popular in the 40s uh, very beaten up but we've put 30 dollars on those as a pair there's chips and obviously a lot of paint loss now don't be tempted to repaint these things because they look absolutely shocking with fresh paint you get much better value for them as they are even if they are obviously quite worn but they're cute they'll they'll sell okay now this morning we've been washing up and we do a lot of time at the sink washing things um usually when we clean out houses and sheds particularly sheds things are absolutely filthy and quite often a lot of stuff comes out of the kitchens and it's coated with a sort of a grease and then dust and it's just disgusting so we do wash a lot of stuff up and that leads us to sometimes disappointment um and quite often you know the old saying you win some you lose some comes into play uh this large glass sort of comport uh didn't notice it until we washed it up but there's a great big fracture across one handle so that takes it from probably a 20 to 30 dollar item down to about a five dollar item um sometimes you see chips on some of the china that you didn't see when you quoted that one's actually okay uh so there's some nice bits and pieces there there was a little bottle where did i put it here it is this little bottle is a eucalyptus oil around about 1900 to 1910 not particularly valuable it's it's a reasonably common brand it's only a five to ten dollar bottle but then when we washed it up and noticed it's got a fracture a chip and a big section fractured down the side so that turns a five odd dollar bottle into pretty well nothing so i'll put that in the recycle bin the glass can still be recycled so there are a few disappointments as you go 
And then also sometimes you find things, of course, that you didn't really notice and it turns out to be quite okay. We've unpacked a few little boxes of small stuff this morning and there were some nice little tins. Nothing outstanding, but five to ten dollar items and they do add up. There were some badges somewhere which I do need to check um, and I don't think anything's going to be particularly good, but I'll let you know in the next section if it is. Okay, I forgot to film a few of these brooches and badges before I put them in the shop, but there's some of them there. Uh, not all of those, but some of those. So a lot were getting $10, some made 20 I think there's a couple on the bottom here, that Apex tie clip and the clay shooting one in the corner there. And there's probably a few over this side, no, up here, that came out of that same box. So, oh, not the Shepherd and one, but yeah, the other one. Oh, actually... No, none of those. But you can see what I mean. We got some reasonable badges, nothing outstanding. They're in my little display cabinet. And sometimes we've just sort of guessed at the price. It's really hard to know what some of this stuff's worth. You tend to just go fishing. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes they sit in the cabinet for a long time and you have to either discount them or move them to the $1 box. And we managed to unpack the last of the black crates this morning. There are still a few cardboard boxes in the back of the van with the bigger stuff. But this gets rid of most of the smaller stuff. There's a nice set of kitchen scales there, probably 1950s. Got the weights. Uh, scales are always popular. They're not particularly rare ones. What do we put on those? Probably about 25 or 30. Oh, we went 40. So probably because it has the weights. A lot of times you don't get the weights with them. Uh, there was some more cutlery, kitchen stuff, the rolling pin. Bit of nice crystal. Those three glasses should get... Uh, sorry, four glasses should get 20. Um more kitchen stuff a nice light shade here it's um it's a victorian style and we got the shade in the container and i had this fitting at home so it's um it's one of those cases where you keep enough junk you'll always find something handy so the shade i probably would have put maybe 15 to 20 dollars on it and now i've now put 40 with the fitting and it's a nice old fitting to match so that's a bit of value adding there that we can do on these deals um now these these are yogurt jars, probably from the 60s. Uh, most of them are Peter's yogurt, but there's a couple of other ones. Uh, a few different varieties, all got their plastic lids, which is really unusual. Now, we put $20 each on these, and this is going to add up to a fair bit of value. Um, I think there was a dozen. So we're going to pull around about $200, a bit over $200, if we get that for them. Now, I am fishing a bit. I've seen a few on eBay sell, and then they've got to pay postage. Uh, I might just put three or four out in the shop at a time, rather than having a whole lot out there in one go. But over time, I think we'll get a good return on those. There's a few other bits and pieces at the back there that we're waiting to see if there's any other bits in, in other boxes. And I think this was a box of linen that Christine has to go through. And I'm going to be able to... Here we go. Yep. Yep, some nice old doilies and linen embroidery work, so... We usually do quite well out of that, so we get to price that. So we also got a few cameras, and cameras do quite well. Uh, these are, are Voigtlanders, I think, and they're probably not in 40s or 50s. Some of them have the fold-out uh, lens, they're bellows cameras, so they'll do quite well in the shop. Uh, we could also eBay them, but I think we'll probably just put them in the shop. Uh, I think we've got 50 to $80 thereabouts, depending on yeah, 75 on that one. So that'll make a nice display in the shop. So next time I'll do a bit more of a clip in this part on just getting some of the bigger stuff out of the van and maybe pricing some of the chairs and things. And then we'll wind up part two. And part three we'll get down to the tin tacks and show you some figures. Okay, it's a bit of a brisk morning out here, a bit windy and cool, but we've been unloading the van, getting some of the bigger pieces out. There's still a bit to go. So that's all we're gonna get out this morning. Uh, there's some Queen Anne bedside drawers over there, but they're only uh, probably 1960s era. They sell okay, but they don't bring very much. The dress, uh, the spinning wheel should bring, I don't know, 80 to $100. I'll have to make sure it's all working okay and not damaged. These early chairs are quite nice. They've clearly been in a shed a long time before they ended up in the container. They're very dusty. I'll probably just wash them up. No restoration otherwise. The back designs on these are actually the same, but they're a different style of chair. So they're probably a colonial kitchen chair, you'd call them. 
these designs aren't carved they're actually steam pressed uh, but they're in pretty good condition there's nothing broken on them so I'll just give them a wash up I think we'll get we'll probably go 30 35 dollars each on those I'm not going to ask a lot for this sort of stuff the uh, the child's high chair is quite damaged in fact one of the legs here is actually totally broken I have to glue that we'll give that a wash up as well that'll be just a decorator piece maybe 25 30 bucks again the um, oh the screens fallen over here these screens are very hard to sell old pressed tin fire screens some of them are brass we're only going to put tin on that I'm not even going to clean it and the this is a cast iron a fireplace fender it is damaged one end it's broken so we have got the missing piece which will sell with it we'll just put 20 on that the pedestal is quite nice a nice solid probably 1920s oak pedestal uh, that would get at least 50 I think a bit of a clean up there we have a whole pile of smalls to get, get take into the kitchen for processing in the morning a lot of washing up required the lamps will need electrically testing and a bit of repair on some of them the old butter churn's quite nice but that one doesn't have a lid we do have another one in the van with a lid but it's missing parts i think it's missing the crank handle those butter churns sell really well in good condition they'd bring 100 to 150. this one's had some white ant damage as well so it's really just an ornament and it might only bring 20 odd dollars these chairs were the bulk of the volume in the van uh, I whinged about packing chairs because they are, all, are awkward. There's 10 of them in this set. They're all the same. Uh, they're probably 1920s or 30s. High back dining chairs. They need work. They're all a bit wonky. But they're not really damaged otherwise. And these ones are good to restore because the inserts come... They just press out. And so they're easy to reupholster. Original springs and webbing. But they do all need a bit of work. We're not going to do that. It's just not worth our time. Sorry about the wind out here. But I'll have to work out what... We might sell them as a set of four and a set of six. Because I think we're more likely to sell them that way. Very few people are going to want a set of ten chairs. But obviously the first person has the option. Not sure what we'll put on them. If we worked on $30 a chair, then a set of four would be 120 might be a bit much considering what work they need uh, in good order in a nice antique shop they'll still get pretty good money but we don't want to carry them around for too long here so we'll probably work on around about 20 to 30 dollars a chair and just work out what sets we sell them in so there we go that'll do for this morning we've got a bit more to get out of the van as i said uh, christine's been helping process stuff this morning uh, the traffic's starting to get busier here we better get our shops open so we'll do another update shortly Alright, the final update for this uh, part. We've emptied the van, other than a couple of things I brought back from my parents' place. So now to finish processing the whole deal. We've got it all out on the footpath this morning. Coco's here chatting with Christine. And Coco thinks she's found her new comfortable lounge chair. Is that a good chair, Coco? Good chair? Uh, so this is one of the good pieces we got from the container. There's that one and the matching one over here. And they're a really nice sort of club lounge chair. I'm not sure what dates. They've got metal casters. The legs look 20s, but maybe they're about 1930s perhaps. I don't know if it's the original upholstery, but it kind of suits it. And I reckon those pair, are they comfy? Yeah, they're very comfy. I reckon those pair would probably bring about 300. So uh, we'll be fishing a bit, but that's probably what we'll price them at. The rest of the stuff we got out of here, I won't go into too much detail because this video is going a bit long. Uh, we packed a lot of stuff in this old trunk. Uh, the trunk hinges, I had it. But uh, there's some okay bits and pieces in there. The piano stool will probably sell quite well. They usually bring more than what the pianos do. I think we'll put about 95 on that. I think it's in pretty good condition. Uh, boxes of assorted stuff still. There's a little lift up lid, like a hall locker thing there little cupboard out of a shed not much really much value there's another one of these EPNS Edwardian two sets uh, we've got one nicely polished well we didn't polish it but one's inside looks a lot better than that one that one really needs a polish uh, an old cane little lamp table it's actually made by Foy and Gibson 
which was a quite a famous Melbourne general merchants in Collingwood probably dates to the 30s perhaps maybe even 20s that one a little deco bookcase which we'll clean up and probably find a spot in our shops and just a few more boxes of sundries I'm not sure what was in this one oh, a bit of old kitchen stuff another mincer by the looks of that in there and an old thermos so we'll finish this video up here this is the last of the stuff we've got a process and in the next video we shall identify a top 10 and give you some facts and figures of the deal we'll see you then thanks for watching